Hey Beams, so I'm Matt Project Anonymous and in today's video, we're going to do color blending and continue our journey with Inkstitch version 3.0. So let's get to it. So color blending has been around for a while, but it was actually a hidden tool because it didn't work as well as they probably wanted it to. So what is color blending? Color blending is a basic operation where it will gradually space out the distance between lines in a fill stitch so that you end up being able to put two colors in opposite directions of that spreading to have an effect of blending two colors. We're just going to try this out to see what type of results we can get and what type of results you can get. Yeah, so we'll play around with some of the settings to see what works best for mm -hmm. us. So should we get to it? Let's go. So we're in Inkscape and we're just using our 4x4 hoop template to do this. So now we can show you actually how to do the gradient fill. Yes, and just to note that you could do this with any shape that's a fill, but we're going to do it just for demonstration purposes with a nice simple rectangle to kind of show you. So the first thing is we're just going to select a color, and now in your Fill and Stroke tab, under Fill, if you select Linear Gradient, which is right here, this button here, you could see that this kind of gives you your gradient tool, which is this line here to define where your gradient starts and stops. And you can select your second color and your second color is right here. And we'll go ahead and just select something that you can see kind of fades into nothing. And that's because the transparency settings is turned all the way up, but we're going to turn that like that. And now you can see how it fades from green to blue. So the next step in the operation is to go to extensions, ink stitch, tools fill and convert to gradient blocks. The default setting is 0.5. We're going to leave that alone for now and hit apply. Now, interesting, it kind of looks like it just undid everything that you, you did, but really it's there. If you go to your selector tool and move this top layer, you can see that there's a bottom layer here. And what happens is your bottom layer or the layer that we defined as green is going to start gradually uh, further away in spacing as it goes to the right, and the blue layer is gonna gradually fade out towards the left. And we can look at this if we go into our param settings to show what it looks like. So you can see here how the spacing is closer together and then it slowly spreads out towards this side and this opposite on this side. And what you get is an effect of blue turning to green and green turning to blue, so a gradient. So we'll go ahead and leave this one here and we'll, we'll play with some of the settings real quick to show you what kind of different results you can get. So we're gonna hit apply and quit on this. I'm actually going to put this back on top and let's do another one. And for this one, we'll go ahead and do the same thing. Second color, go ahead and use the same. Turn the transparency up. Now, what I want to do is kind of play with this line a little bit. So you can see you can move where the gradient occurs on the shape with this little line here. And you can also kind of turn it sideways and you can get kind of a gradient effect at an angle. That would look cool with like a circle probably. Yeah. So what I'm going to do so that I can get basically all blue here on this side and all green here and the gradient happening in the middle. I'm just going to move our gradient line towards the middle and then it will make a quicker transition between the two. So I'm going to try that there and then we'll go ahead and convert this. Apply there and you can see you get a little bit different results and that's because the max spacing on this blue is going to stop here and the same thing if I move this along this side the green stops here in the middle. We'll do one more and we'll uh, play around with this spacing setting. So we'll go ahead and increase the spacing. Let's try one. It might be a little bit too much. So there is a, a note in the Inkstitch uh, website about gradient fill that the more you space this out, you may have uh, some issues where you can see your material underneath. Uh, but this will blend it out a little bit more because it, the spacing in between each line will be increased. So we'll hit apply on that one and we'll go ahead and try that one out. And then we'll do one more, but for this one, we're gonna do more than two colors. Now you can do as many colors as you want. And that's pretty cool. If you wanted to do the entire spectrum of the rainbow, you can do that. So we'll go ahead and show you that real quick. 
do a red, and then we're gonna go ahead and do gradient, and we're gonna go to our second color, and we'll choose maybe a pink. Now to add your third color, all you have to do is right here in your fill uh, selection under gradient, you can see this little plus sign, and that's going to add a color. So make sure you select on that third color, and then you can go ahead and click a new color. What this also does is it gives you another bullet point on this gradient line where you can shift where the three colors shift on your design. So now we have a three color gradient shift and you can do it, like I said, you can add as many colors as you want to do this shift across your design. And again, we're using very basic, simple design just for demonstration purposes, but we'll go ahead and stitch these out to show you the results that we get. I'll change this back to default, 0.5. So we're going to use these two colors and we've found that the more similar your colors are, the more gradual looking the blending effect is. So we finished embroidering it and I think this was cool and just seeing like what different settings we get different results, how many colors you can do. Yeah, I think our third result was actually pretty good and nice uh, gradual transition between colors. And again, that's the one that we changed the setting from 0.5 spacing to one. And that makes sense because a default fill stitch is I believe 0.4. Uh, so if you double that, because the stitches go on top of each other to anywhere from around 0.8 to 1, I think is going to give you the, the best results when it comes to fading those colors in and out. So I think that really looks good on that third one. And of course our three color one turned out really well as, as well. Obviously we probably should have picked colors a little bit more similar to each other to get a more gradual transition between the dark pink and the middle pink, but uh, still a really cool different way to show different results and custom results to your embroidery project. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get reminded every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.